Hey, what's up everybody? Abbas here from Golden Motor. Today, I'm gonna be upgrading this stock Suron with this massive 72 volt battery and the BAC 8000. This thing's gonna be a monster. I'm gonna show you step by step how to do that. Let's go. So the battery that we're using is a 72 volt battery, 38 amp hours. Um, it has a 300 amp BMS with Bluetooth. So uh, massive uh, power in here and uh, has 21700 molly cells so super high quality so and then we're pairing it with the uh back 8000 uh so this thing's gonna be a powerful beast and um we're, and i'm gonna zoom in over here show you all the parts that come with this kit and i'm working on my boy tanner's bike uh he's gonna be upgrading everything on this bike so follow his instagram channel for the whole journey and let me zoom in and show you all the parts so obviously here is the controller. This is the plug and play wiring harness. It comes plug and play with the egg rider, which we're gonna be upgrading with. So you're not gonna need the stock display anymore. Uh, Tanner ordered the uh, egg rider holder also, it's optional. He's gonna be upgrading everything on his stock bike. So nothing's gonna be stock anymore. Uh, the kit also comes with a few uh, heat shrinks that you're gonna be waterproofing some of the plugs that we don't need anymore. Uh, here is the mount for the uh, controller, all the necessary screws that you're going to be needing. Uh, the tools that you're going to be needing is a hex set, um, some sockets right here, a Phillips screwdriver, and a heat gun to um, melt the uh, heat shrink. All right, let's get started with the install. First step, what we'll be doing is taking out the battery, the stock battery. So make sure you turn this main switch off right here. Uh, disconnect the plugs and then disconnect the main power and this thing should slide out. Next step is to start removing the stock Saron controller. You're going to need a four millimeter hex for this two screws right here and a three millimeter hex for these two right here. Uh, make sure you keep all the bolts in a safe place because we need them later. The next step is to uh, lower the bash guard. So you're gonna do that by removing this screw uh, with a five millimeter hex and same thing on the other side. And then this one and the one on the other side, uh, you're not gonna take out the whole uh, bolt, just uh, loosen it so that the bash guard can slide down so we can access the phase wires. So I have the bash guard open, so the phase wires are now exposed over here. Next step is to remove these two bolts on both sides, a uh, four millimeter hex right here. So I got this plastic part removed now. Uh, next step is to open these two bolts right here, five millimeter hex. And then this is gonna expose this part right here. So all the wirings that are in the back, um, those are gonna be exposed. So I'm gonna take these two bolts out. Okay, so the next step is to remove the stock display. Uh, we're gonna be replacing this with the egg rider display. Um, I already removed the handle grip, so all you gotta do is use a Phillips screwdriver. There's a little screw right here. You loosen that up and then the display will be loose. Once the display is loose, you wanna unplug it from the, uh, the controls over there. So you have to take out these two bolts right here. You just use a four millimeter hex to take these two bolts out. So after you have these two bolts removed, just take out this cover right here. Be careful with all the wires. And then you wanna take out the old stock display. So there's gonna be two wires running from here, one for the display, one for the two button switch. So just follow those wires 
all the way. So this is the first one. Just wanna unplug this one. There we go. And the second one is coming right here. So unplug these two. There we go. So the next step is to install the egg router display. So you put it on the handlebar and I put the protective case on there. This is optional. Uh, Tanner got it because he does a lot of jumps. So it's a nice way to protect your display, but it is optional. So, and then you route, route the wire the same way. It came out to the other display and it goes down over here. And then eventually we're gonna connect, connect it to the controller and I'll show you that later. So now we're gonna put the, after this, we're gonna uh, heat shrink three of those exposed uh, plugs that we had. There's two from the, two from the display that we took, took out. And then one, this was in the battery, uh, from the stock battery. So we don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna route this over here and then we're gonna be putting heat shrink on these three right now. So you, after you have the display hooked up and then use the three heat shrinks that came with the kit to cover the uncovered, I mean the unused plugs. So now you gotta tuck everything back in, be gentle with it, treat like your kid. You don't wanna squeeze any of it. And then this cover is gonna go back in. And if, if it's not going in, just play around with it a little bit, just pull it back in a little bit, but be very gentle with it. And then, oh yeah, make sure the egg rider display is going through also. We don't want that to be left behind. There we go, everything's in. Okay, and then move the wires up here so that's perfect. Nothing squeezing. And then just use the four millimeter hex to put these two bolts in. And then now we're gonna work on the underside to install the controller. So before I start working on the underside on the controller part, I'm gonna put this on. So the two big bolts with the five millimeter hex. Over here, you gotta be careful. Do not squeeze any of these wires. Just don't wanna do that. This one, um, so the original stock battery took, takes the power cord and this uh, cord right here, this you're not gonna need anymore. So I just like put the heat shrink on, waterproofed it. After I put it in, I'm just gonna tuck it in later. But so the power cord's coming out through here. And then make sure you're not squeezing in the wires, push everything in beforehand. There we go. Let's line up the line up the bolts. Okay, this one's in. And just tighten it up. Okay, so before we start working on the controller, let's put this bash guard on. So this goes underneath over here. Do not squeeze any of the wires. Phase wires are out. Good, and then take the two remaining big bolts, the five millimeter ones, five millimeter ones. This one came out when I was installing it, so just put it back in. The tap part goes right here. Okay, let's see if, there we go. Same thing on the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten these and then we go to the fun part, the controller. Getting close, so we're gonna take this out and then race it with the stocks are on. Okay, so the next step is to take out these brackets that were there for the stock controller and then these new brackets we have to install that came with this kit. Um, use a four millimeter hex to take out these four bolts and then we're gonna mount these two right here. So after you have the mounts for the new controller installed, the second step is to install this mount that comes with the kit. So you will be installing this, let me move that in, to these two bolts right here. So it's gonna go in like that and you're gonna mount it right there. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna start putting up the plugs for the controller. So the next step you're doing is hooking up this controller to the phase wires out of the motor. So this kit comes with extension phase wires. So, and then it comes with uh, a nut so you can connect it to the uh, existing phase wire. 
So you have the bolts right here. And then you're gonna hook it up with the nut. And then you're using a 10 millimeter socket and four millimeter hex to tighten this up. So I've already done it on the yellow over here. So this is what it looks like once you're tightening it up. And then you put the heat shrink on and then heat that up and then it's waterproof. So I'm gonna do the green and the blue now and I'll be right back. Okay, let's finish up the wiring for the controller. So now we're gonna plug in the, the two wiring harness plugs right here. And then same plugs that were plugged into the stock controller. So this is a rectangle one. This one plugs in over here. Make sure you hear that click. And then this plug right here, the square one goes in right here. This is a little bit tighter, but there you go. And then to finish it off, I'm gonna do the wiring over here for the bat coming out of the battery. So this is a positive and negative terminal. So negative black and over here. And then don't forget this, this is the coming, it's coming out of one of the wiring harnesses and this goes on your ground. So the negative right here. So again, this is going into the ground. So on top of the black right here, so unscrew it, put this in and that's it for the wiring. So I'm going to finish this up, mount the controller and then just put some finishing touches on this bike and then we should be ready to start racing it against the stock uh, Sauron. All right guys, install is done. I put my 72 volt battery in there. So the stock Sauron has a 60 volt battery which has a 90 amp discharge. This one is a 72 volt battery with a 300 amp discharge. So a big difference. Controller is looking nice. So we're gonna start out with the acceleration. So I'm gonna show you the difference in acceleration between the stock and this beast right here. When we ready? Yeah, are you ready with those chancletas, bro? <laughs> safety you got first, the man. Safety first. You got the Black Panther helmet on. Should we call you the Black Panther with those chancletas, bro? We'll call you the Brown Panther, if anything. <laughs> hey, what's the Brown Panther symbol? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ready to ride, Mr. Right. Ready to ride. Let's go. Let's go. Count, count it down, Momo. All right. All right. All right. Wait for the car to go. And three, two, one, go. Not even close. Not even close. It's not even a race. The fellows are testing out the top speed. And we got the stocks are on following through. Way behind, as you can see. So, in conclusion, the upgraded Saron smoked the stock Saron. <laughs> All right, guys, so that was a comparison between the stock Saron and this upgraded beast right here. So, I have it limited up to 12,000 watts. This thing can do up to 18,000 watts. So, we haven't even touched the uh, ceiling on this right here. Um, I, I hit 60 miles per hour and then I ran out of real estate so I don't even know what the top speed on this thing is but it's a lot. Um, if you're interested in getting the battery and the controller, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, thanks again for Tanner um, for letting us use his bike. That's it. Brown Panther checking out. <laughs>